So in this section, we're going to discuss other bases. So other bases can include, um, in this case, we can see base 5. Right? But really, we can count in any base we want. You know, recall back in the Mayans, we were counting in base 20. And now the first example is going to be base 5. We'll count in base 2. We'll count in base 8. We can count in any base system that we want. And really what it is about is just this method of counting in different base systems, where we, we, what we thought was so unique of base 10 is now not so unique. It really wasn't base 10 and counting in the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. That part wasn't unique. What was unique was the exponents on the base in which made the place value. So recall that in base 20, or in base um, 10, right, we had this little bar chart with place value and then the digit. So the base can be any base we want, right? And and the digit is depends on which base, right? So we'll just put little dots there. But the base, remember, the base isn't so special anymore. It's the exponents that ch that never changes. So here, it doesn't matter what the base is. I could have base 2, base 5, base 20, base 40. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that here's the ones place always because anything to the zero power is 1. Here is the b to the first place, b, the base to the second, base cubed. So. It, the base can change, but the exponents will never change. And then the base will determine what digits are on, in your number. So for example, let's go ahead and take base 5. If we take a look at base 5, we will see that the ba 5 to the 0, that first one, like up here, is the ones place, right? Well, that makes sense because anything to the zero power is one. So the ones place will always be the ones place no matter which um, base you're in. And then notice that it goes one, two, three, four, right? But the bases change, exponents don't. So five to the first is the fives place. Five squared is the 25's place. Five cubed is the 125's place. 5 to the 4th is 625 uh, place, right? So notice the place name changes as our base changes. And that's because as we evaluate these exponents from on the base, the name of the number changes the place name. OK, so how do we know? Like if I wrote 34 in base 5 versus 34 in base 10, both are in each of the base systems, right? How do I determine that this is base 5 and this is base 10? Because we know that they're different. Well, we do have this nice little notation. And it's right down here in this box, um, blue box, where it says, like, if we were to write 43 in base 5, we would put a little um, 5 at the bottom, right? So it's a subscript. So you can write this as, um, 34 base 5 or 34 and then put the numeral 5. However, I don't recommend putting the numeral 5 because we can easily, if we write tend to write big or we get tired, this could easily become 345, you know, as we can know our own writing. So um, it's not that you can't write the actual numeral. Just make sure it's a su subscript, like a smaller number. Um, so I do recommend that you just write out the number as best as you can. OK, and then if we have 34 in base 10, then we have no subscript. So this is just notation. So if a number is given to you without 
um, a subscript on the bottom right, then we know that it's base 10. We default to base 10. The only other way it can be something else is if it tells us that it's a different base system and this is the number in written language. Other than that, if they just give you a number with no subscript, then we assume that it's base 10. Otherwise, numbers in different bases will have this little subscript on the bottom right. Um, and it's funny, huh? Before you never even need to worry about this stuff, but now you do. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and rewrite now each base five number in base 10. So again, I want to emphasize that we're going from base five to base 10. So if we're going from a base five to the base 10, that means we add in multi multiply and add. Right, And we can do something similar as we did in the previous example, where once again, we could identify place value and digits, and we would take each place value and digit and multiply them, and then add them all up. Again, it doesn't matter um, what base we're in. If we're going from a base n, any base, to base 10, we always multiply and add. So in this case, if we think about base 5, recall what digits belong in base 5. Recall that the digits in base 5 are always 0 and 1 less the base, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 5 digits in base 5. Right, so five digits in base five, and when we include zero, that makes that number one less than the base. So we go from zero to four. So if we had a keypad that we had to do our count phone numbers in base five, you know, and dial, we're only going to be using zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so if 23 is in base five, let's find what this represents in base 10. And I would say, well, what if I wrote you a check for 23 in base 5? How much would that be in base 10, right? So we have place value here and digits here. And some students don't like writing the um, table each time, but it's a really good way to start off until you get the hang of it all. And then eventually you won't need the table anymore. So um, 23 is only two digits. So we have two and three. I'll draw the barrier. So that means three has to be the ones place and two has to be the fives place. Okay, so if I took each digit and multiplied by its place value and added them up, I would get the number in base 10. So let's do that. So we have five to the first times 2 plus 3 times 5 to the 0 and so that's 2 times 5 plus 3 times 1. So that'll be 10 plus 3 which is 13 in base 10. So now what I can say, my thought would be 23 in base 5 is equivalent to 13 in base 10. That's like the thoughts that you should have. So notice when we go from a smaller base to a larger base, so 5 is smaller than 10, right? Notice that that's always going to be a larger number because we can fit more groups of 5 into 23 than we can 10, right? 10 is a larger group of um, of units, right? And so five, there's more fives that fit into 23 than 10. So we assume that the it would be a smaller number because we can fit less tens in 23 than we can fives. So let's try 412. Notice that I first I want you to notice that every digit in the base five number belong, is between zero, um, I'm sorry, is in between zero and four inclusive. Even the larger numbers that we see, as long as each digit and each place value is in this set, then we're okay. So let's go ahead and try again the table. We'll do a little table here. And I'll use PV for place value and then D for digits. 
Okay, so start at the ones, please. Five to the zero. We see that we have three digits, so we're going to go up to five squared. And therefore, we have an two in the ones, one in the fives, and four in the twenty-fives. And let's go ahead and use the same method. We'll take each digit and multiply it by its place value, and then add them all up. Okay, so four times twenty-five plus one times five plus two times one. So four twenty-fives is a hundred plus five and then plus two. So that'll be one hundred seven. If I copy this right here, and I'll go ahead and erase these. Okay. So now using that same rationale, we have 412 in base 5 is equivalent to 107 in base 10. So once again, notice that if we go from a smaller base to a larger base, the numbers will be smaller. And the reason why is, again, we can fit more groups of 5 into 412 than we can 10s. We fit less groups of 10s in 412, and therefore it's going to be a smaller number. Okay, so let's try this ginormous number with 5 digits in it, and we'll do a table. And I'll do PV for place value and D for digit. And we'll have, um, let me do blue, and then we'll start at the ones. We have five of them, so we're going to go up past the 125's place and to five to the fourths. And let me go ahead and draw those barriers. And then the digits starting at the ones is 10421. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow the pattern. Take each digit, multiply by its place value, and add them up. So we'll have 1 times 5 to the 4th plus 2 times 5 cubed plus 4 times 5 squared plus 1 times 5 to the 1st plus 0 times 5 to the 0. So 1 times 5 to the 4th is 625 plus 2 times 5 cubed is 250 plus 4 times 25 is 100, plus five, 1 times 5 is 5, and then plus 0. And you can go ahead, I just did that by putting these in the calculator. Okay, so now adding these all up, 625 plus 250 plus 100 plus 5 plus 0, that adds up to be 980. So again, notice that the 12,410 is a much larger number than 980. If I wrote you a check for 12,410 in base 5, you would be like, oh man, she just wrote me $980 in base 10, right? So um, it's, again, the reason why base 5 numbers seem to be larger than base 10 numbers is because we can fit more groups of 5 into this number than we can groups of 10. We can fit less groups of 10 into 12,410. That's why it's going to be a smaller number than if it would be in base 5.